when I think of the word hood, I think of a person, a place, and perhaps even a thing. I'm Sir Creepster, and welcome to Muhlenberg County Ghost Stories from the Hood. Tonight's tale of terror is entitled Legend of Bell Witch, Big Benny's Ghost. When you hear the name Bell Witch, one usually is quick to associate it with an urban legend that originated out of Tennessee during the early 1800s involving the haunting from an unseen entity that plagued John Bell and his family for several years. There have been books as well as movies depicting the terror the family endured due to these hauntings. Tonight's tale of terror involves a dear friend of mine who has since passed away and a cemetery located in Central City, Kentucky that had been self-proclaimed by someone many years ago as being the Muhlenberg County version of the original Bell Witch's final resting place. After numerous tales of the cemetery allegedly being haunted, it showed its wicked face to this friend of mine one hot summer's night several years back. This particular older friend of mine that I'm referring to decided to come to where we were all hanging out resting up and after a few minutes of me insisting that he tell us what was going on with him and his friends due to the troubled look upon his face, he calmly begins to convey to us the horrifying events of an incident that took place when he and a group of his friends had decided to pay the town's local cursed cemetery a friendly visit just for kicks and how what had started out as being a night of fun with his friends quickly turned into a night that he would never forget. So, sit back, relax, grab some snacks, and be terrified by yet another Muhlenberg County ghost story from the hood. For reasons unknown, I've always been drawn to stories dealing with anything involving ghosts, demons, poltergeist, witches, etc. Either through my personal involvement or from stories that were shared with me through various family members and friends. Tonight's tale of terror comes from a dear OG friend of mine that brought it to me and my peers many years ago before his passing. And it's an absolute pleasure of mine just to be able to have the opportunity to share his story with you. Benny Wayne Van Meter a.k.a. Big Benny, the name in which he was always referred to by everyone who knew him in the hood, was a very humble and lovable guy. More like an oversized gentle giant, his smile and laugh alone were unique around myself and everyone living in the hood. To simply put it, he was truly one of a kind. Big Benny would often join in with us while we were playing basketball in Gish Park, and it was known to all of us for his canning ability to be able to mimic nearly every player from his favorite college basketball team at the time, which like many of us back then was none other than the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Simply put, Big Benny was as good as they come and an absolute joy to be around whenever you were in his presence. The year that this particular story took place was around 1976. I was 13 years old at the time and myself and several of my friends had just wrapped up a lengthy cross-court game of basketball. While we were all sitting around resting up for our next game, I happened to glance over at the parking lot and I noticed that a group of older guys had all gathered together standing outside of their cars and they were emphatically laughing and teasing Big Benny about something that had happened to him while they were hanging out together several days earlier. As we all stood there listening to the older guys picking on Benny, it didn't take long for us to notice the unsettling reaction that was coming from him directed solely at his friends. It was obvious that Big Benny was getting more and more irritated from the heckling that his friends were causing him minute by minute. Still not fully aware of what was going on with Big Benny and his friends, the gang and I decided to take a far longer break in between games than usual and do some good old ear hustling. A decision that I and the rest of my friends that were present that day would later on regret. 
As my friends and I crept closer to the group of guys, it still wasn't clear what they were teasing Benny about. But whatever it was, it became apparent to myself and my friends that it was definitely something that was very personal to him. After taking all of the teasing he could from his friends, Benny slowly made his way over to the shelter in the park where myself and my friends were sitting around resting at the time. He had only been at the shelter for a few minutes when I noticed that none of my friends seemed to want to luster enough carriage to ask him what was up with him and his friends. So I took it upon myself to do just that. Reluctant at first to speak on the matter, Benny glanced around the bench at all of us, took in a deep breath and said, what the heck fellas, here is what the big ordeal was about. At that moment, he began telling us why his friends were giving him such a hard time. According to Benny, a few days earlier, he and his friends were hanging out in the park, listening to some music and knocking down a few cold beers. When one of his friends unexpectedly asked the rest of the group if they wanted to take a short ride out to Bell Witch Cemetery to finish up the rest of their beers while they were there. So they loaded up into three vehicles and off they went. It was only about a 10 minute ride to get to the cemetery and after arriving there around 11 o'clock or so, Benny said that they immediately started getting down and guzzling the remainder of the beers they had taken with them. Then they all started to exit their vehicles. Ben recalled it being pitch black dark at the graveyard and not one of them happened to have a flashlight handy to make it easier to see any of the markings on the headstones or anything else. So they were forced to use the few cigarette lighters that were available at the time. According to Benny, as his friends gathered around the cars preparing to take a stroll through the graveyard, at the last minute, he had an unpleasant feeling in his gut that this was not a good idea to be disturbing the dead in any way whatsoever. So he decided to be the chicken of the group and just wait in the car while his friends went about prancing through the cemetery, loudly laughing and giggling along the way. To pass the time away, Benny said that he turned the key back in the ignition and popped in an 8-track tape of Marvin Gaye as he patiently awaited their return. After having been gone for about 10 minutes or so, Benny said that although it was in the middle of the summer, for some unknown reason, the temperature in the air around him seemed to drop at least 20 degrees. He would go on to tell us this took him by complete surprise and a feeling of bone-chilling fear draped his entire body from head to toe. At that moment, Benny said that he reached up and turned on the car and then its heater to try to warm up his body from the unexpected chills that it was experiencing at the time. Totally aware that it was the middle of the summer, Benny recalled just how loud the nightly insects had been upon arriving in this secluded area, stating that it was because of the excessive noise from them was why he decided to turn on the music in the first place, doing whatever it took to drown out the insects as best he could. At that point, Benny took in a deep, deep breath as he looked around the bench at me and my friends with a terrified look in his eyes. He paused for a brief second, and then he proceeded to go on with the rest of his story. According to Benny, it wasn't long after he had the cold chills run through his body that he recalled that out of nowhere, there was complete silence all around him. No longer could he hear the loud sounds of the insects throughout the cemetery. Mentioning thus, how he found this to be extremely odd and very much so out of place. And according to Benny, before he could begin to get a grasp on what was happening, he thought that he heard a faint sound of someone singing and that it was the voice of what sounded like a young girl due to the low tone. As he sat there in the car anxiously awaiting his friend's return, the singing continued to get louder, as if whomever was responsible for it was slowly getting closer and closer to where he was. But because it was so dark at the time, then he said that he was unable to pinpoint which direction the singing was coming from. He told us that it sounded as if it was all around him. Then out of nowhere, then he said that he looked up at the rearview mirror in his car. And to his surprise, 
there she was, a little girl wearing an all-white dress, gleefully singing Ring Around the Rosy. The girl then proceeded to happily skip around the car as she continued singing the song, all along staring into the car at him with a cold, lifeless look upon her pale face. By now, he told us he was too scared to even attempt to yell out at his friends. And when he thought that they might be able to do just that, he told us that no matter how hard he tried, the words just wouldn't come out of his mouth. All he could do was close his eyes tightly shut, roll up the windows, lock the doors, and pray to God that his friends would be heading back his way very soon. Benny was unsure of how many trips the little girl made around the car. All he remembered was that it seemed as if it went on forever. And then out of the blue, the singing just stopped. By now, Benny told us that he had nearly peed on himself from being so scared. Benny told us that he waited an additional minute or so before opening his eyes. And when he did so, he told us that the little girl was gone. According to Benny, it was as if she had just vanished into thin air. Afterwards, he immediately began to hear the sounds of the insects all over the place again, as well as noticing an immediate back to normalcy change in the temperature. Soon after, Benny told us that he would hear the sounds of his friends' voices heading his way, and at that moment, he let out a huge sigh of relief. Once they had all reached the car, but he said that one by one, each one of them started to question the look upon his face, noticing right away that it was a look of absolute fear. His friends also wanted answers to why the windows were rolled up, as well as why the car was locked. Not hesitating for one moment, but he told us that he went right in on explaining to his friends in detail what he had just experienced and how it was the reason for the apparent state of shock and disbelief that he was presently in. But the response from his friends was far from what he had expected, pointing out that rather than take his word for it, they instead started teasing him and calling him a chicken, all because he refused to take part in their little graveyard adventure. Nonetheless, Benny told us that he firmly held fast to his story, stating that he had no reason to lie about anything then, nor lie about anything now. Benny would go on to live several years after the cemetery incident, and for the remainder of his life, I would find myself bringing the cemetery story up to him at least a couple times whenever I ran into him. And on both occasions, although according to Benny, the guys that were with him that terrifying night never quite bought into his story, he solemnly swore to them, as well as to me, that it was very much so true. All I know for certain was that his story never changed whenever he shared it with me leaving me no other choice but to believe every word that he had ever told me about the dreadful night he experienced while at with his friends at the legendary Bell Witch Cemetery was true. So, a word of advice to all of the paranormal joy seekers out there. If you're ever out near the Bell Witch Cemetery for whatever reasons and you just happen to hear a child's voice singing ring around the rosy, get the heck out of there because you too may have run in with one of the alleged ghosts that still to this day haunt the grounds of the Bell Witch Cemetery. I'm Sir Creepster, and until next time, stay terrified. <laughs>